Bless the Lord. The scripture here in Hebrews chapter 13 verse 20. <clears throat> it says, Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, <clears throat> the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do His will. Working in you that which is well pleasing in His sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. God will always be working in us that which is good. He will always work in us that which is pleasing unto Him. People say, yeah, but the Lord told me this and He said that and, and He changed His mind and God doesn't change His mind. He's the same yesterday, today and forever. But He will always work His will in our hearts and in our lives. And it will always be confirmed with the Word. So we need to have that assurance that God is working. And He who began a good work in you, He will complete it. Now you may not think you complete it, but each day God completes a divine work in our hearts and in our lives. We work us together with God. So we work with Him. We don't work against Him. We don't try and live on the edge and say, okay, I just want to make it to glory. Some people just, as long as they can do everything that they want to do without considering God, but they must make it to glory somehow. Well, they may be surprised. But our Lord Jesus is that great shepherd of the sheep. So he's always leading us, guiding us into all paths of truth, righteousness. Through the blood of the everlasting covenant. This covenant that he made in his blood will never, ever cease. It will never run out of its power. There's always power in the blood of Jesus. And like I thought, only eventually the blood of Jesus on the cross, <clears throat> that's what purchased our, us out of darkness. There's seven stages of the blood of Jesus. And we need to understand why each position of blood, every drop of blood, has a divine assignment. That God had a divine assignment. And we, when we understand the blood, the understanding of the blood and how we apply it in our lives, we have more understanding in everything that God wants us to do. So we had a look last week at the, the, the drops of blood and the significance of the drops of blood of Jesus that hit the ground. And it had to be in such a way, he couldn't just give himself a little cut and then drip the blood on the ground. It had to be in such a way, God will see the agony of his soul and be satisfied. So that blood, that curse on the ground had to be broken. And that curse is where we receive our income from, because Adam had to live from the ground. And everything we have is actually from the ground. And he had to receive the blessing of God through Jesus Christ. But that curse on the ground hindered him from earning a living. Because what did it produce? It produced thorns and thistles. Hindrances to us earning a living. And we know that Satan took the kingdoms, not by force, just by deception. That he went to Adam and Eve, and he deceived Eve. And Adam partook of the fruit. And, and he said to Jesus, that Satan said to Jesus when he tempted him, that all these kingdoms and their power and their authority has been delivered to me. Did God deliver to him? No. Adam did. Adam surrendered over his entire authority. Now he had to struggle to earn a living. So the blood of Jesus in the garden, that first drops of blood, he had a sweat because out of the sweat of the brow of man, he would earn a living. And Jesus had to break the sweat of the brow. And when he hit that ground, the blood the vessels burst, hit the ground, he broke that curse. <clears throat> that doesn't stop the cares still coming. But thank God he's done something about the cares. And I want to read um, in Matthew 27. This is after they whipped Jesus and, they, and he presented Jesus <clears throat> to them, to the multitude, when Pilate saw that he could not prevail, that's verse 24, 
he, he could prevail nothing. But that rather a tumult was made. He took water and he washed his hands before the multitude, saying, I'm innocent of the blood of this just man. You see to it. They released, them, they released Barnabas unto them, and when he had, they had scourged him, Jesus, he delivered him to be crucified. And the soldiers of the governor took Jesus <clears throat> into the common hall and gathered unto him the whole band of soldiers. So the whole bunch of soldiers were around. And they stripped him and put on him a scarlet robe. And when they plaited a crown of thorns, they put it on his head and a reed in his hand, and they bowed their knee before him and mocked him and said, Hail, King of the Jews. They mocked Jesus, bowed before him, put this crown of thorns into his head, and they spat on him. And you know, there's a significance about spitting. In the times of old, when a person spat, especially spat on a person, or even spat on the ground, they actually said a curse and spat. And they were cursing and mocking <clears throat> the King of Kings, mocking Jesus. And then they took the reed, which they gave him as a sepulcher. <coughs> and they took that reed and they smote him on the head. And every time they hit onto that crown of thorns on his head, every thorn that pierced in and buried itself into his head <clears throat> must have been excruciating pain. Besides the scourging, besides all the, the cares, all the trouble, all the worries that he faced of facing death and facing the separation from the Father. That for three hours, that was probably the most excruciating pain that he could have experienced. Three hours on the cross, there was darkness, and he said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? But every time, every thorn that hit into his head, and hit through into his skull, it hit the blood. And that's where without the shedding of blood, there is no redemption. So thank God that the blood of Jesus, the everlasting covenant, is taken care. Because what did Jesus say? That the cares are, they the thorns. In Matthew 4 verse 14, the, uh, yeah, the sower sows the word. We were talking about sowing the word and four different heart conditions. And one of the heart conditions is they sow among thorns. Are these that hear? You see, they hear the word. I've heard the word. Yes, I know that. I know that. Okay. They hear the word and the cares. The cares of this world, or as the other, uh, it says the cares of this life. The deceitfulness of riches. And the lust for other things, or the desire for other things, entering in. Where do they enter in? They enter into the mind and then they partake of, of the heart. They enter in and they choke the word and it becomes unfruitful. So that crown that is upon man's head from Adam, that crown of cares, that crown of worries, that crown of how are we going to do this? How is that going to happen? What are we going to eat? What, what, how is all these things happening? There are so many cares and even now the world is becoming uh, fearful. Jesus said their hearts, in the last days, their hearts will fail them because of fear. They put their trust in money. They put their trust in things. And all these things are shaking and moving. And the, the financial state will never ever be the same as what it was before. Uh, the new money that's coming out, the new uh, currencies that are coming out, uh, they are shaking, they are fearful of what's happening. I received four messages this morning, just coming through, about what's happening in the world today, and what's happening in the banks, and a number of banks are being crashed, because there's things happening, the cares, 
And even though we live in the midst of this world, we live in circumstances we need to face every day, but Jesus Christ, when, that, his, when His head was crowned with thorns, it's in order for us to have the crown of victory. He had to overcome that. He had to overcome. And the blood, when the blood was touched, when those thorns hit the blood, that care was taken care of. Now, He can say to us, that <clears throat> cast all your cares on the Lord because He cares for you. Casting all the cares. I spoke to one uh, person this, this week. Their budget for a, for, for a month is a million rand. A million rand. And we were thinking our budget was big. <laughs> so they just reminded us of their budget. And I think, well, okay. But you know, God gives us grace. Whatever your budget is, whatever your salary budget is, your staff budget, whatever it is in, in business, in ministry, that budget, God knows your care. He understands all the cares that we face. He was tempted in every way like we are, yet without sin. So He's able to take care of our cares. Not our responsibility. Big difference between the two. Many get confused. Oh, the Lord will take care of that. Oh, the Lord will take care of that. And I've seen it. And then a month later, <coughs> where's the Lord coming through? One guy pitched up here at the airport with his suitcase, believing that God will provide him an air ticket. So he stood there for three days. <coughs> Nothing happened. But the Lord, you didn't come through for me. Some people get offended with God. Because they think he's going to take their responsibility. No, they're not. We have a responsibility. But thank God he will help us through. And we cast all our cares on him. And say so he got on the road on his way back. They robbed him of everything that he owned. Everything. I was robbed in Durban of everything that I owned. I believed. <coughs> I was at school Saturday nine and decided, no, I'm out of here. I'm going to Durban because I'm going to find myself. <laughs> I lost myself somewhere. When I got to Durban with all my, my, all my goods, my uh, two suitcases, and a, uh, I only had one blanket. They stole everything except the one blanket, which was a poncho, so it had a hole in so, so it was pretty cold with that. And uh, when I got back, I realized, you know, <clears throat> I didn't lose myself anyway. I need to find Jesus. And thank God, a number of years later, I found Jesus. And He is able to help us and aid us through all our temptation, through all our struggles, through all our trials, through all the cares, because His blood has taken care of it. Through His blood. The blood of the everlasting covenant. Therefore, Jesus says, and this <clears throat> is one of the scriptures, that by the grace of God, we can actually understand. Because he says in Matthew 6, 24, No man can serve two masters, for either we'll hate the one and love the other, or else we'll hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. We need finances, but we can't put our hearts and our trust in those finances. Because that, that can get wiped out in a day, in a moment. Therefore I say to you, take no thought, take no thought for your life, what you eat, what you will drink, nor for your body, what you will wear. Is not your life more than meat and more than body? Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather in barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. In other words, takes care of all their needs. Are you not much better than they? Are you not of greater value than they? And if you look at some of the birds, uh, I'm amazed. Someone sends me uh, pictures of birds. I'm totally, totally blown away that each uh, uh, species and the colors, and uh, it is amazing. It absolutely amazing. It just blows me away. And the flowers, and he talks about the flowers. <laughs> Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not. Neither do they spin. Yet, I say to you, that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. 
in the glory. The, the, I mean, even our fables, such a minute, intricate beauty that God. Therefore, if God will close uh, the clothe the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore take no thought, saying, what we will eat, what we will drink. You see, <coughs> what happens is, when the cares come, we take the thought, oh, I don't know what I'm going to do. Oh, look at that, they just phone me now. And, uh, and then the, the bank phones, and then you, oh, I'm not going to answer it now. Uh, and these cares, but you know what? Father, help us, because we put it into his hand. And I want to give you seven uh, things that, that will help us, because Jesus said, seek first the kingdom of God, and his righteousness, and all these things will be added. And it takes faith in him. It takes faith in the blood of Jesus, that he destroyed the power of the curse of the ground, where we receive our income from. And he destroyed that cares when the, the devil wants to mock us and just throw these cares at us. What about this? And what about that? And things happen and we don't know what to do. And uh, eventually one day I, I remember thinking about all these things and I actually spun around and fell on the bed. <coughs> and that was a soft landing. <laughs> but it's it's... The devil wants to surround us, surround us. But what about this? What about that? What about your future? What about your kids? Uh, and all of the, what about the government? What about your home? What about all these cares that come up upon us? And I saw what happened when, when I spent a little while in DB, in the army, in the military jail. And uh, wasn't very happy to be there. But I caused a lot of things that caused me to go in there. But one of the things they used against us, see, they weren't allowed to touch us, but they would get a bully that will get hold of the guy. And I warned them, don't you ever touch me. And I got such a fright. It was my voice. You don't have to keep that voice. <laughs> but what they did is, when, when they decided that we, we weren't cleaned our, uh, our prison cells clean enough, and uh, they decided, okay, it's time to give to chase these guys on the parade ground in the, in the heat and this red dust parade ground. Those of you who have been there, you know what it's all about. And what they did is, they would give you a command. Now in the army, after the, your three months training, um, who's been in, in the military? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah the stoke man. Okay, but when they train you, they will train you links or brass or full advance. And, you know, uh, so you obey the command because it's automatic. So what they do in DB is they chase you. Now you're running, and then they tell you all kill. So now you go, and as you turn around, they turn you uh, left turn. So, so now you go left and then right. And I want to tell you something. Within about six or seven commands, you just see guys drop, light up. Their brain snaps. Not because they're physically exhausted. But their mind can't handle it. And they just snap. And then you have to run. And if your step is on that guy, you step on him. Otherwise, you get uh, this bully comes to beat you. Okay? And, uh, so, and that's exactly as Satan will throw one thing, another thing, and another thing. And he just, he just starts throwing these things. It's time when we just need to just sit and eat first at the master's table. Just put that aside and come to the master's table, like Mary sat at the feet of Jesus while Martha was serving. She, there, was, there was a big responsibility to feed all those hungry apostles. They were big eaters, and, uh, and all of them together. But you see, just spend time at the master's feet. Just spend time with the Lord. Just relax and say, it's time now. Just, just forget about it. All these troubles, I'm not going to listen to them. I want to... Spend time with Jesus. And every care that there is, every care on this earth, every care every, that comes against us, there is a word of power against us. Every care. For example, my God shall supply all your needs according to His riches in glory. 
So we need to take that. That word will counteract that care that comes up against us. Cast all those cares by declaring what Jesus, Jesus has lifted my cares. He's lifted the power of those cares. Hand them into his hands. And he says, and until you be crowned with victory. You see, that's, a lot of people say, okay, Lord, I cast my cares, okay. But I'm running around, spinning around. What am I doing? Okay, the Lord's taking care of it on the crown of victory. In other words, put the word, promise of God's word, you put on that crown. That's the victory crown. Jesus said, let no one take your crown. So don't allow Satan to steal that from you. Because the power of God through the blood of Jesus has destroyed the power of those cares. And draw on his grace which is sufficient for us in all the situations we face. Trust him that will give us the steps to have victory. And to walk in that victory. And God may give you a plan or a thought. And you think, but wow, that's just too easy. Or whatever it is, we trust in God for his divine purpose in our hearts and our lives. And the blood of Jesus. And you know, every time we partake of the breaking of bread and partake of that cup, the scripture says you declare the Lord's death until he comes. So you don't even have to say it. But your, your actions declare Jesus Christ through his blood has taken care of all of my cares. Jesus Christ will work all things together by the grace of God. All things together for them that love God and are called according to his purpose. Do you love God? Of course you do. And he will work all things together. Father, thank you. In your hands I commit all these cares that you work all these things together for the good because I love you. And I'm called according to your purpose. Help me. Give me a plan of action. What to do. And then give voice to the redemptive blood. Because you see, that by the blood of Jesus, <clears throat> it says we overcame the accuser of the brethren who is cast down, who accused us before God day and night. And not only does he accuse us before God, he accuses us. Oh, but what about this? And he begins to accuse us. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of the testimony. The word of power. The word of decoration. The prophetic word. You see, people are saying, uh, Paul writes, and he says, I would that you all prophesy. Well, what better way to prophesy and declare the word is to declare exactly what God said. And to receive that's done. And that's the word. You declare what God's word. And you declare it until you're crowned with a victory crown. You see, sometimes you just want to say it. Okay, well, I believe uh, it's done now. And just walk off and the cares. But when we crown with victory, we crown with the word of power, the victory that Jesus Christ has given to us. And bring every thought captive. We have weapons of our warfare, we have the Word of God, we have the power of the Holy Spirit. And that we bring every thought, every care that comes against us. Thank you, Father, that you're making a way. Thank you, Lord, I'm casting this on you. Give me wisdom in the midst of the circumstance. What must I do? Let God work all things together because He loves us and are called according to His purpose. He has a blood covenant for us. And we can partake of that blood. The everlasting covenant. The blood of Jesus Christ will never lose its power, Brendan. The blood of Jesus Christ will never lose its power. There is power in the blood of Jesus. And it's not just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. But there's power in the blood of Jesus to break the curse that of our ground, wherever we receive our income from. And to break the cares, the curse of the cares of our lives. So the devil doesn't run around in mockery like the soldiers in the time of Jesus. They mocked him and they beat him until that thorns were embedded in his head. And thank God for that because now we can have the crown of victory. We can walk in the fullness of what the blood of Jesus has done on our behalf. And it's a good thing to, to, to get yourself one or two thoughts. 
where you can see it and put a bit of red uh, ink on it. That's why my hands are a bit red. Not from blood, it's just from me. And just to, as a reminder that the blood of Jesus has destroyed those, the power of those cares over our lives. And we can walk in victory with the crown of victory. And let no man, Jesus said, let no man take your crown. Don't let Satan take your crown because he's been destroyed. His power over the believer in Jesus Christ has been destroyed. Thank God we will have the victory in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thank you, Father, for the everlasting covenant that we, by your grace and your mercy, are partakers of that. And thank you that blood was shed on our behalf. Thank you, Lord, we can walk in victory, casting all our cares on you, and taking up the crown of victory that Jesus Christ has given to us and walk in that victory in Jesus' name. Thank you for divine wisdom in everything that we set our hand to. Thank you for the plan of action. Thank you, Father, that our God is able to work all things together for the good because we love you and are called according to your divine purpose. In Jesus' mighty name.